But no. I think one of the things that I found really compelling on like HubSpot's roadmap, for instance, is the idea of they have all this service conversations and they know all the content that you have both in your knowledge base and your blogs and everything else. As they just basically look at every conversation you're having on the service side and be like, Hey, by the way, you have tons of people who have a lot of questions about like your Stripe integration and you don't have that much content that answers this. Like you should go create content that is about this. And I think very similarly, you guys can look at this and say, here are all the types of things that your audience is really interested in. And we don't have the inventory of, of the type of content that matters. And I think what's really interesting that I think ties to sort of like a macro thesis about what I think a lot of people are doing in this arena versus what actually drives value is using the AI to create that content is not super interesting. And the value of the content you're going to make is just not going to be very high, but the AI can absolutely help you figure out what should you create and what should it yeah. look like. And, and that is yeah. super compelling. Yeah, dude. I I mean, you're preaching to the choir. I, every day you're like, oh, now this is the generative AI tool that's going to actually deliver me stuff that doesn't suck. And you get into it and you're like, oh man, that sucks too. Right. You're like, <laughs> yeah, And I just, and I think, and I think it's really an interesting period. And I, and one of the things that I feel really good about with ATC is if you're a reasonably mature marketing team, you've been around, you've got six, seven, eight, nine people, you've created a few hundred pieces of content across your website. It is highly unlikely you have a content production problem. Yeah. Highly unlikely. Right. But like all the hype is around the generative stuff and it's gotten so easy to produce more, not produce more good stuff, but produce more. Yeah. So we kind of like get, get wooed in that direction. We're like, that's so cool. And dude, sorry, it's a freaking parlor trick. And that content's going to do jack squat for you. Yeah. Right. And, and I, and I think what is really, really compelling here is getting to say to a marketing team, look, you've written awesome stuff. If you think this stuff from three years ago is kind of like, you know, crusty and not so great. I don't know what to tell you other than take it off your website or update it right? That, that's an update problem or a, I'm embarrassed by a problem. And we weren't, we aren't the same business. You should think about, you know, how you're managing the content that's on your site for sure. But if it's out there and representing you in all likely, we find this all the time. Something a company wrote a year and a half ago is like exactly what somebody is going to find compelling right now, but there is no marketing operation on the planet that has any kind of repeatable way to do that. Yeah. None whatsoever. It doesn't exist. And we're coming in and saying, guys, you spent the time, you kicked ass, you did the human driven stuff. It's real good. Let's squeeze all the blood out of that rock. And then by letting you know topically what you're missing, you know, in order to retain and maintain that level of relevancy, virtuous cycle, right? Now you can actually, to your point, sit down and spend the time. Now we do a bunch of reporting on those topics, mm -hmm. right? Like, so if you have written, Hey, here's the stuff that you do have. We also tell you what is ranking. We tell you what your competitors have written about that subject matter. We tell you what that topic level audience is also interested in. So like your header twos. So we have one in ours that I'm getting after right now. That's, we haven't written about social media and it's really compelling to a lot of our yeah. audience for obvious reasons. They're also interested in analytics. They're also interested in marketing automation. They're like, so like having a, a, a cluster of content about social and this, 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 and this, and these secondary topics, I know it's worth the time to sit down and do it because I literally have 879 people who need me to, mm. right? That's 879 people I'm writing for rather yeah, than an just like, I'm going to go write something and I hope somebody cares. I hope somebody cares. I know they care. In yeah. fact, I can guarantee you that if you're leveraging ATC recommendations through your marketing efforts, that content will get activated for any one of these 879 people pretty soon. Yeah. Right. So like it just, it really, it really, I think unshackles people from feeling like they've got a volume production problem and lets them get back to writing for relevancy and quality. And I think that's, that's something that, that marketers are kind of thinking, like, dude, I don't want to do this LLM stuff. Like, I don't yeah. like the output. They don't like it either. Yeah. But they're searching because they feel like what the problem is, is production. And it's not. It just. And I think they're also getting like, and I think something I'm curious about. So I think everyone's getting 
immense pre- what we see right is everyone's getting immense pressure and what i tell all the analysts who are like oh is the ai stuff like making a difference in what people are doing in hubs i'm like everyone shows up and says ai is really important to us and then they're like oh we have the ai stuff and they're like oh that's great ai is really important to us and then everyone moves on no one has like no one knows the use case no one knows what they're doing it's all window dressing and sort of boondoggles and nothing that actually moves the needle